Hey guys, today I've got an anatomy tutorial slash body painting video for you on the Erector Spinet group and this group has lots of moving parts so let's get to it. I'm starting off by painting all of the vertebrae because the Erector Spinet group has attachments along almost every single spinous process and transverse process of each one of these and then I'm including the sacrum and the ilium at the bottom. Of course I've got to get all those ribs in there because this muscle comes up and attaches to all the ribs so here we go. And I'm a little scared about how much fun I'm having painting the scapula. It's a little bit creepy. There's actually no technical attachment sites to the scapula, but look at how much I go to town with these guys. I gotta finish these ribs because they go all the way up and then fill in the scapula. And now I'm gonna start shading. Oops, I forgot the spinous processes. I almost forgot the spinous processes. Okay, now I'm gonna start shading. I gotta say I really love the way that these bones pop out once I start shading them. And it does two things for me. It, it kind of throws me back and makes me, I said back, <laughs> but it really makes me sit in awe about how amazing the structures deep within our back are. And then at the same time, it makes me freak out that our backs aren't in more pain than they already are because look at it, it's crazy complicated. Okay, I'm finally painting the muscles. I'm gonna start with the spinalis. The muscles in order from medial to lateral go spinalis, longissimus, and then iliocostalis. And I'm just touching on the spinous processes of the lumbar vertebrae and the lower thoracic vertebrae because those are the origins of the thoracic part of this muscle. Technically, some of those spots are insertions too, so I'm gonna connect those dots up and down the thoracic part of this muscle. And now I'm getting into the cervical part, and I almost forgot to paint the nuchal ligament. You can also call it the ligamentum nuchae if you wanna sound like you speak Latin fluently and you're super smart, but there it is, check it out. This little guy is really just a ligament attaching the EOP to C7, the spinous process of C7, but it serves as an attachment site for the cervical part of the spinalis, so important to know. Time to do some shading. I'm gonna use some white right here to paint on those tendinous attachment sites and really make sure all of those fibers from the spinalis are coming down and attaching onto all those spinous processes. And then remembering that those connective tissue attachment sites don't just stop right there, they continue on and wrap around the bone. And there's the spinalis. Moving laterally, the next muscle I wanna paint is the longissimus and I need to paint the mastoid process. I almost forgot that on both sides. And then I'm going to start down at the base of the spine because the common tendon serves as the insertion for this muscle along with the upper five transverse processes of the thoracic vertebrae, which I'm highlighting right here. This muscle looks like it starts at the sacrum and ends at the skull, but it really kind of starts medial and works laterally. So as I'm painting, I'm thinking about those fibers going out laterally and attaching onto each of those ribs as it's working its way up the spine. There's a whole host of insertion sites for this muscle, so I'm not gonna say them out loud, I'm just gonna list them right here. As a side note, this is the longest of the three erector spinae group muscles, and if you want to see how I work on these muscles or want some ideas on how to work on them differently, you can check out my video right here. I want to do some shading in here because I think it looks really cool and I think this is starting to look like a big thorny stem to some crazy brunette flower, so I guess that would make the common tendon down at the sacrum kind of like the roots. I'm painting a lot of white down here because these roots are really strong and thick and they kind of have to be. It's our back. And there's two out of three, spinellus and the longissimus. And last but not least is the iliocostalis, creatively named for its attachments on the ilium and the costals. Not to be any different than its siblings, this one also has a tricky set of origins and insertions, starting at the common tendon and the posterior surfaces of all 12 ribs, and then it goes on and inserts at all these crazy places, which I'm just gonna list right here. Time for some more shading. 
I'm using white one more time to highlight that common tendon down at the base of the back and just emphasizing how strong this tendon needs to be and how strong this connective tissue is and how much can go wrong down here. And if you really look at these muscles as a whole, it's incredible to think how strong they are, how beautiful they are, how responsible they are. So take care of them. They're the only ones you've got. I want to see all of that up close. Here you go. All the way up from the base to the skull. And you can also see some pores in there too. There's the nuchal ligament. Side view. Because I just can't get enough of this. It's so stinking cool. I love it. My stupid camera ran out of space on its memory card, so I had to use my phone for this. The erector spinae group does extension that we just saw, and it also does lateral flexion of the spine right there. And if you want to, it can dance. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Click the thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on social media, and don't forget to be awesome.